Heavenly Father, we come today once again in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and we come to your word, which is truth and life. We ask you to bless your word this day in each heart. For we ask these things, Father, in the holy and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Question today is, do you believe? And how much do we believe? Do you really believe? Do you believe he's here today? Because he is. And yes, throughout time in my own life, in my own walk, there's things that have blocked me from feeling his presence. And I'm sure it's happened to you as well many times. There's times where I've solicited God for healing and for change and felt like I was hitting a brick wall. But oh my God, the wonderment, the day that you break through, the day that he shows up, the day that he comes in to your situation. Imagine this as we read Psalm 57, which is what we'll be reading today, when it's about David, who just had the rug pulled out from under him when he was fleeing from Saul, an army of Israel for his life. And there he is in the wilderness all alone with nothing. Had everything and all of a sudden it went to nothing. Being hunted like a dog to be killed. And he takes that moment of time when everything's changed, when disaster has struck, as many of us at times have experienced, maybe it's the loss of a loved one, it's a divorce, or our husband or our, our wife suddenly is in a mental institution. Where we experience some type of loss, or we're in a situation that is uncontrollable, that doesn't look good that could have serious consequences maybe it's a medical issue you just got the word from a doctor about your health could be your finances Such David's in, a, in this similar situation. Oh, he had a reputation, but now it's changed because of all the lies. And what does he do? He looks to him. What a wonderful place to be. in the middle of a disaster. Who better to go to or to connect? So we read Psalm 51 verse one it says, be merciful unto me, O God. Give me something I don't even deserve. Because yes, I am a sinner, but I love you. And I know that you made a way for me and that you died for my sins for me. I know that you're merciful. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. And that's an important step in our, in this discussion is the trust. It, it's coupled with our belief. Do we believe? that he's in our corner, that he's in your corner? Does he really show up? He goes on and says, in the shadow of thy wings, I will make my refuge. A refuge is a safe place away from the disaster. 
a quiet place from all the turmoil that's bombarding your mind. From the things that are trying to invade your heart, the temptations, the voices of this world, the attacks of darkness, we look for a refuge, a place of safety. And it's not a cowardly thing, it's a smart thing. As David looked for refuge away from those that wanted to harm him, to destroy him. And everything that was his. And who does he turn to but his Savior, his God. And as we go with me to that place in the wilderness, in the woods, in that quiet place, yes, we, in our lives, we need to find that quiet place. Call it your prayer closet. And it's there you commune with him, with your God. You know, your God, the God that created the universe, the God that created you, the God that can make something out of nothing, the God that can change your circumstances, a God that can make a poor man rich and a rich man poor, a God that can take one person and set a thousand to flight. Yes, a God that can take someone like Elisha, And lead an army back to their, to their own country who was ready to destroy them. Can read the story. He does great, marvelous, wonderful things. Yes, miracles. For you. And you may be, oh, he's never done. Maybe you haven't tried it. You see, sometimes God pulls the rug out for, because of of his love, and that sounds crazy, and people may want to run from that. But in my own life, I would have never known the trust of God unless he pulled the rug out from my own life years ago, when our com company had to file bankruptcy. Steel mills were closing, everything. Disaster upon disaster. We filed chapter 11 bankruptcy first. We ended up filing seven, which is distribution of all your assets and we were going to and we were reorganizing under a different name we had to do we didn't have another choice it was a disaster and we were waiting for our assets to be sold again i had to run for cover i had a family to feed And when I went into my prayer closet, the answer I got, you're going to go through a difficult time, but I'm going to get you through. That's what I was holding on to, was his word. I didn't know how it was going to happen. And yes, it was so with suffering. You don't think David suffered as he's hiding in the wilderness? He was anointed king of Israel in the very army that he's king over is chasing him. Look in the complete opposite, the bizarre things that the enemy tries to throw at your life, especially when he brings you a word, when he brings faith to you. The first thing he's going to do when you walk out this door is create something to make it look the opposite. Oh, that wasn't God, to break that faith. And that's the battle we're in every day of our life. It's a battle between good and evil. It's a battle between your blessings and your success in life or destruction. And yes, that yoke can be easy in that burden and light if we hold true and hold him close to our hearts. But if we wander away, if we allow that grace to filter out of our lives in the holes of our life because of doubt and fear, yes, it becomes harder. That's why we need to maintain that strength, that grace by staying in his word and praying every day. Such was the case in my life when I was going before him during those times and I was holding on to him. And I've told you the story that even during that, in the midst of that financial crazy destruction that we were going through, I was dealing with the IRS. 
the very IRS agent calls me on the phone to show you how God can be in the midst of all these things, in the midst of your disaster, can speak to you, even through your enemy. The IRS agent who was planning to lock our business up because of the taxes we owe, called me after he threatened me a week before and said, Mike, I have one thing to say to you. There it comes. This is it. This is the last, last nail going into my hands. He said, keep the faith. Can you imagine that? This was a business. This wasn't a church. We hung up. Tears came to my eyes. I knew it was God speaking. I had bills all over my desk. And although our assets were in a receivership waiting to be auctioned off, I still owed the IRS the money because I was a secretary treasurer. That was a personal liability that I inherited from the company. But this is where God goes to work. This is the beauty of what you have with the loving Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that is in your midst. When everything hits the fan and everything's being thrown at you, even the kitchen sink, as I said, as I said in the vestibule when I was getting dressed for mass with my bishop, I said, you know what? I feel like everything's been thrown at me, even the kitchen sink, and I feel like I'm holding the kitchen sink in my hands right now. But this is where God meets us many times, is when we're on our rear end, when our back's up against the wall. You know, like Moses when he was up against the wall with the Red Sea. This is where God gets his glory. And oh, it's like, it sounds like a cynical story that what I have to go through that to get it. No, you don't have to. I don't know what plan God has for each of us. I know what I went through. I went through hell. I was responsible, not just for that business, but for all the employees that were suffering from it and the family that was dependent on me. And then something happened, just like it happened with David. If you read the story, he's out there and he says this as he's seeking the Lord This is where the reality of God comes into our lives. It almost like he fixes it to your hands or there's nothing else you can do. You're just there to be the vulnerable victim. Like my bishop told me. He said, you got to be the victim. I was the victim. And I was waiting for the boom to drop. Just like I waited for when my son was on trial for $40,000 and 40 years, waiting for the boom to fall over something he didn't do. And then the change comes. You see, our faith will be tested. Who are you going to call? Remember that? What was that, a commercial or something? Or a song? Huh? Or is it the other one? You're worried about who let the dogs out? You know, they're all chasing you. Or who are you going to call? Ghostbusters, is that what it is? Yeah. Who are you going to call? David called on his Lord. You know what he said? This is where David was. It's all hell was breaking. What was he going to do? Supply lines cut off, everybody looking for him. He says, I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. Think about that. What does he need to perform for you today? You know what he needed to perform for me when I lost my first 
when I lost Audrey after 28 years of marriage? Going to the supermarket. I hadn't shopped in a supermarket for 28 years. And suffering the loss, and I needed food, as I stood down by the dryer and the washing machine, it was one of the hardest things for me. Because this was all this extra stuff put on my plate. I'm standing in a supermarket. I don't know where anything is. And I needed God to not just comfort me, but to guide me through that part of my life. To start doing my laundry. To start doing my own food shopping. It was a pain like you wouldn't believe. As you're in the midst of a loss. Getting back to the bankruptcy. Waiting for the letter to come with the receivership. Here's the date of the auction. All your tools, your trucks, everything. And we're scurrying to reorganize so we can somehow make a living. We put the, the company under our my nephew's names and my son. We had to get, we were unbankable. It went from Jerome L. Staub and Sons, who was bankrupt, to Staub and Sons. And that's all we had. And then an inspiration comes. Where did that come from? The inspiration was, why don't you offer the receivership to buy your assets back? Well, I can do that. They had about $180,000 worth of stuff. And guess how much we were able to scrounge through my nephew's line of credit? $15,000. So I called up my lawyer who was helping us through this. I says, hey, uh, can we make a bid on this, these assets? Because there, there was nothing happening. It was this, there was no auction date set. It was just sitting there. Sitting there, sitting there, sitting there with no action, which was so abnormal. They don't do that. They set an auction date and they sell all your assets and pay off the bankruptcies. But that wasn't happening. So my lawyer says, I never heard of that before, but let me ask. So he calls the receivership and they said, we never heard of that before, but yeah, it's okay. We offered them $15,000 on $180 and they accepted it. And we were back up and running like nothing happened. I had a woman at a service one time. And I didn't know this. God gave me a word of knowledge. Someone is being accused of a very serious situation. And the Lord wants you to know it's not your fault. That was the word. I didn't know who it was. But this situation was destroying this woman because she was accused as a nurse in a hospital of giving someone the wrong medication and the person died. The other part of that message that the Lord gave was that God's going to vindicate you. Later on that week, as they were doing further investigation into the situation, they discovered it wasn't the nurse, but it was the doctor who prescribed the wrong medicine. And they vindicated her. And she came the next week in tears and great joy, saying, you said that last week. That was me. And I was vindicated. But it was destroying her life that she made this mistake that caused another death.
the power of God which supersedes all the natural and all the spiritual because he is Lord of all, can fix whatever it is that you're dealing with. Can counsel you like David. If we give him the opportunity. When disaster strikes or problems come, rather than fleeing, and running away in fear. To stop and check in with your God, like David, who performeth all things for you. <coughs> he helped me with shopping. I got to like it after a while. You know, find the, the pickled herrings that I love. I had to ask a few questions where they were, all right? The horseradish, I didn't know where horseradish was. My God, I must have went up and down in miles six different times. Where's the horseradish? And I'm calling on God, would you please help me? I mean, send somebody. Because they're just not going to walk around with you with the hand and say, well, here's where the cornflakes are, and you know. But after a while, as in natural, you get used to the supermarket, you know, well, when I go in, I'm gonna, I made my list of the veg, or the fruits and vegetables first because that's the first style you go to. I start getting smart, okay? These are everyday things in life that he will help you with. Maybe you're facing a medical situation and you're worried, he can lift the worry from you. As we put our lives in God's hands, because where are we going? We're in his hands anyway. And his word is so true that as, as we walk with him, as we accept him, he says, he promises us that there's nothing evil going to be formed against you if you're trusting him. Like David, they were trying to get to him. And I don't know how God navigated him every day to avoid the army. But it's obvious David had a prayer life. And it's obvious that he was trusting God and not anything else. In today's world, with the government that we have, these everyday situations, the institutions we have, are hitting every household. Parents who have children have to make a decision about their children's education if they even have a voice, lest they be dubbed a domestic terrorist. If you don't agree with what's being taught in the schools today, which go so much against many of what we believe. As we want truth, we want history that they can learn. Teach them how to learn or how to think, not what to think. We see the moralities of our world disintegrating. And no matter what way you turn today, we find these things invading our everyday lives. Whether it's in our social life, And there's decisions to be made. You know, we, we hear about all the shortages that are out there right now. We run, we're dealing with gender identifications. The landscape is shifting and changing in every corner, it seems like. And every week it's another change that is not always in accordance with this word of the order that he's placed out there. And then we need to navigate around it. And that's the beauty of what he promised us. As he spoke to this ministry and says, don't look to governments, don't look to institutions, look to me. And that's what David did.
And that's what God's asking us to do, is to look to him and commune with him, find him in that prayer closet and let him guide you. Let him navigate you with your children. Let him navigate you with your job, like he did with me, with a simple inspiration, with a simple word, it'll be hard, I'll get you through. See if you can buy your assets back. A disaster was completely turned around, almost instantly. And he'll do the same for you. Whatever it is you're facing. I will cry unto God, most high who, unto God that performeth all things for me. Trust him. Let's pray, Lord Jesus. We lift these before you today. As they face these everyday challenges that are that we're all facing. we see our justice system that was built on your word disintegrating in front of us. Where we see lawlessness being called protests. And when we see law-abiding citizens protesting the education of their children, we see them being arrested and dubbed as domestic terrorists. It's upside down in many cases. And it's affecting each of our lives in many ways. And we need your help. We need your direction and we're asking for your direction. As you promised not only to direct us, but to provide for us, to comfort us, to overshadow us. As our God, you've asked us to follow you and that you would get us through whatever it is that we may face in this life. So Lord, I ask your Holy Spirit to fall and to be with everyone that is here today. I pray that they carry you with them as they go to their homes and to their businesses into their social lives where they're suffering. Maybe it's a relationship that needs healed or fixed, whatever it might be. I ask you to be with them, Lord. I pray that they tap into your glorious splendor of heaven, that they're open to the grace that is sufficient unto the day of evil. I pray that they're open to your wisdom. That you give them discernment and understanding. To be able to discern between good and evil. To be able to discern your pathway versus the world's. And give them the strength, Lord, to carry that. To carry their cross. which will bloom into a wonderful, abundant life. We pray for their families, and we ask all these things. In the holy and blessed name of Jesus, we pray this day. Amen. 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 I ask the Lord to bless you. We live in really difficult times, especially if you're a hardhead like me. They like the traditional ways, okay? 